Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I would like to thank uh, Elijah for the very kind invitation. It is uh, really an honor for me to be here. And uh, I will discuss uh, about the uh, genetics of sudden cardiac death with a specific focus on sets since uh, Mendelian diseases. Have we have already heard uh, um, sudden cardiac death uh, in adults is uh, uh, a major cause of uh, uh, death in Western countries, uh, and the major underlying uh, causes are uh, coronary artery diseases. The situation is uh, pretty different uh, in a young subject. We will keep uh, the cutoff of 35 years. Uh, in which uh, the event uh, is uh, clearly rare with uh, this incidence uh, that for the, for instance, Italian court is one every 100,000 subjects and the underlying causes are uh, pretty different. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, there is a, a high prevalence of Mendelian uh, diseases as a cause of sudden cardiac death. A subgroup uh, of uh, this uh, sudden cardiac death uh, in the young uh, uh, is uh, recognized to be uh, cinemateria. That means uh, the heart is morphologically normal, the toxicology is uh, negative, and uh, the percentage uh, are uh, variable from one third, and uh, you have heard in a previous presentation up to 60% of the cases. Uh, these cases are termed SETS, uh, sudden ar arrhythmic uh, death uh, syndrome cases. Of course, it was uh, very logical to think that uh, some of these uh, SETS cases uh, could be due to inherited transmitted channelopathies uh, because uh, uh, in these diseases, uh, the heart is electrical unstable. The sudden cardiac death can be also the first manifestation of the disease, and typically the autopsy is uh, negative. Uh, two group of studies uh, uh, have tried to address uh, the relationship uh, between uh, channelopathies and sets. Uh, in a group of study, a molecular screening, uh, the so-called molecular autopsy of channelopathy genes, uh, was performed in such victims. Uh, and I would like uh, uh, to uh, mention uh, um, the first studies uh, by uh, Ackerman groups uh, published in 2004-2007, in which uh, 49 cases of sudden, uh, um, um, sudden uh, um, sets uh, with a mean age of 14 years were screened, uh, first uh, for um, CPVT and then LQTS genes, and taken together we arrive uh, to 35% uh, of these victims uh, carrying uh, uh, mutations uh, potentially responsible of CPVT and long QT syndrome. Clearly, molecular autopsy in these cases uh, is the first and last opportunity to make a correct uh, diagnosis, and this is uh, critically important uh, for the management uh, of uh, these uh, families. Uh, another of other publications uh, uh, were performed in the following year. I'm not able to mention all the publications, uh, but uh, uh, as you can see, um, the, um, the percentage of mutation identifying channelopathy genes uh, range uh, from 10-15% uh, for LQTS genes and you have a percentage going uh, to 20-25% also including uh, CPVT. Uh, so this concept uh, of a molecular autopsy uh, is uh, now um, strongly part uh, of uh, the uh, clinical recommendations uh, also given by this uh, expert consensus statement published at the end of 2013. As you can see, is now a class one uh, indication uh, to collect uh, uh, blood and tissue suitable uh, for molecular autopsy in uh, old sex victims. Uh, while uh, it is a class 2A indication at the moment, uh, so it can be useful, the molecular autopsy, why it becomes uh, a class 1 recommendation, the screening of the family member, if a mutation clearly responsible for one of these arrhythmogenic diseases is identified in one of the victims. The second group of studies uh, that try to uh, find how much uh, these uh, channelopathies are responsible for sets uh, 
uh, are a group of study that uh, uh, perform a familiar evaluation of sex victims to try to identify these uh, inheritable diseases. Uh, among uh, the studies performed, I would like to mention this one uh, by uh, Arthur Wilde, in which uh, 43 consecutive families uh, with at least uh, one set of victims uh, were studied uh, and they were able to find uh, an inherited diseases uh, in 40% of uh, uh, these uh, uh, families. And uh, another uh, study is uh, this one by Elijah Bear and Bill McKenna in which uh, 57 consecutive families with sets were evaluated and uh, in this case uh, they used uh, a mixed approach uh, in which uh, not only the clinical evaluation of family members was performed but in a subset uh, of uh, these uh, cases uh, also a molecular uh, autopsy. Uh, was done and uh, um, taking this data together we're able to identify a cause of sudden cardiac death in 53% uh, of uh, the families. In a very uh, recent study in which more than uh, 2,000 consecutive uh, um, cases um, uh, were um, uh, studied, uh, uh, the focus of this article is to evaluate the clinical characteristics and circumstances of death. However, in some of these cases, a familiar evaluation was performed as well. And again, you have a high percentage of cases in which you are able to identify an uh, arrhythmic condition um, going in the family. So uh, going back uh, to this expert consensus document, now is clearly a class one recommendation also the clinical evaluation uh, all of uh, all first uh, degree uh, family members uh, of uh, uh, SATS victims. So in this uh, consensus, uh, this uh, mixed uh, approach uh, in which uh, the clinical evaluation of the family members plus a molecular autopsy is uh, proposed and whenever a diagnosis is made, uh, clearly uh, the family members uh, will be uh, managed uh, according to the diagnosis. If the diagnosis is not made, uh, a follow-up uh, will be done dependent uh, on uh, age uh, and uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, another chapter of uh, uh, sudden cardiac uh, uh, death, unexplained sudden cardiac death, uh, is the more complex uh, uh, chapter of SITS, uh, that is uh, the sudden cardiac death uh, below uh, one uh, uh, wage, uh, that is unexpected by history and uh, uh, in which a post-mortem examination fails uh, to demonstrate an adequate cause of death. There are um, a number of studies uh, published on SITS as well uh, in which a molecular autopsy was uh, performed. Uh, this is a study that we did in collaboration uh, uh, with a Norwegian group uh, in which 201 SITS cases were screened for LQTS genes and compared with uh, 227 controls. At that time, uh, these uh, huge uh, databases with exome available for controls individual were not available, so we look uh, at uh, ethnically match uh, uh, um, control. Uh, we try to be conservative, uh, studying functionally all the variants uh, identifying this uh, uh, cohort, uh, and we ended up with a functional mutation and rare variants in LQTS genes in around 10% of the cases. Uh, of course, uh, now with the availability of uh, these uh, huge uh, databases uh, uh, in which uh, exome data are available, a re-evaluation of some of these studies uh, uh, I think is very reasonable and this is the, the nice uh, work uh, that was done uh, by the Danish group in which uh, uh, they review uh, 159 articles uh, in which uh, a kind of molecular autopsy was performing SIDS uh, victims and uh, uh, a total of 68 variants uh, in channelopathy related genes uh, was identified. 
looking at these variants uh, in the exon variant servant database uh, uh, containing individuals older than one year, they were able to identify one third of the variants previously linked uh, uh, to SEEDS. Interestingly, uh, the majority of this variant found in the general population had also functional study uh, showing an electrophysiological impairment. So the conclusion of the order was that some of these uh, variants uh, may, reduce, uh, uh, may display reduced penetrance variable expressivity or maybe they may be considered more uh, disease modifier than really pathogenetic uh, mutations. We very recently performed uh, uh, another study on uh, uh, unexplained uh, intrauterine fetal uh, demise. In this case, uh, we took in consideration, of course, uh, uh, the data available in this uh, exon variant servant database and 1000 genome project. Uh, again, a functional study was performed, uh, and uh, functional variant in LQTS genes were identified again in around 9% of the cases. Uh, however, we just wanted to go in uh, more details about uh, uh, these uh, findings. And uh, in this uh, um, study that uh, we recently published, uh, we review all the mutation associated with SIDS intrauterine fetal demise. And we wanted to look also at those LQTS patients uh, that have life threatening arrhythmias uh, within the first year of life, the patients uh, that usually uh, can be called as near miss SIDS. What we noticed uh, uh, is that the distribution of uh, variants between potassium and uh, sodium channels is very similar in SITS, uh, intrauterine fetal demise, and these uh, uh, near miss uh, SITS uh, with a prevalence of sodium channel variants that is completely different uh, of what you observed in adult LQTS. So this uh, uh, could make us uh, think that indeed uh, these SCN5A variants are doing something and there is a negative selection for STN5A carriers in the perinatal and early infant period. However, uh, there is a difference between the variants uh, that we identify in, this variant, in these uh, kits with life-threatening arrhythmias in the first year of life and those that we identify in SIDS and intrauterine fetal uh, cases. The location of uh, the mutation is uh, uh, clearly different. And also, if you look at the exon variant, at this public available database, none of the mutation identifying the cases with CV here, neonatal LQT3 are present in the Exxon variant server database. So this means that these are really very severe mutations that are not compatible with survival. And indeed, practically all the mutations identifying these kids were not inherited by the parents, uh, but were uh, so-called uh, de novo mutations, while the situation looking at SITS and intrauterine fetal demise uh, variants uh, is different. However, making a statistic, uh, you see that uh, in SITS and intrauterine fetal demise, uh, they are significantly more prevalent uh, than in the general population. So uh, my interpretation as well as uh, uh, the interpretation that probably gave the Danish group is that some uh, of the functional variants uh, that we find in SITS court that are clearly more present than in the general population maybe act more as a favoring factor in a phase, uh, in a very delicate phase uh, period uh, as uh, the developmental phase that you have intrauterine or uh, during the first year of uh, life. In terms uh, of uh, uh, recommendations, um, for uh, SITS, uh, there is a recommendation uh, to collect uh, uh, personal and family history circumstances uh, uh, of death. Uh, and again, there is a consensus to collect blood or suitable tissue for molecular autopsy also for the SITS uh, uh, victims. Uh, and molecular autopsy is uh, a class uh, to a recommendation.
I would like uh, to uh, close my, um, uh, my presentation uh, discussing with you about uh, a uh, sort of new clinical entity that can be cause of sudden cardiac death in very young. And uh, uh, this is, uh, these are the so-called uh, calmodulin uh, diseases. Uh, calmodulin, uh, as you know, is a very important protein uh, in uh, the heart because uh, through the binding of the calcium is able to regulate the function of different ion channels. And very recently, mutation in this calmodulin have been associated with a very severe form of CPVT, long QTS, and idiopathic ventricular fibrillation. Uh, the first uh, uh, report uh, uh, was done uh, uh, also by Elijah, where linking uh, calmodulin 1 mutation with CPVT. The following here, uh, we link a very severe form of long, uh, long QT syndrome with uh, CALM1 and 2 mutations. And this uh, year, uh, Arthur Wild and Connie Bezzina group linked uh, uh, CALM1 mutation also to idiopathic uh, ventricular uh, fibrillation. Is interesting that in our genome there are three different genes on three different chromosomes that are encoding for the same calmodulin protein pointing at how important is this protein for the function of the heart. And these proteins are expressed in fetal, infant and adult heart. Practically all the mutations identify are uh, located uh, in the calcium binding loops uh, of uh, the calmodulin uh, protein and uh, impair uh, calcium binding. These are the LQTS uh, uh, mutation, while uh, this is the representation of CPVT and idiopathic ventricular fibrillation mutation. Very recently, all studies of this here, um, a functional characterization in the heterologous system has been performed for the two CPVT and the three um, LQTS uh, mutations and is uh, interesting that uh, despite these mutations are very close, those associated with CPVT have a major uh, effect on the regulation of the rear 2 channel, uh, creating a higher spontaneous calcium and sparks activity, while the ones associated with LQT3 do not affect at all rear 2, do not affect the sodium channel current, that was another logical current, but they seem to strongly suppress the calcium dependent inactivation of the L-type calcium channel. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the first uh, reports are always those uh, showing the most uh, severe phenotype. Very, very recently, we, uh, together with other groups, uh, characterized other five uh, mutations in CALM2 genes. And this time, there are cases in which the phenotype is not as uh, severe as uh, the ones uh, previously described. And these case, interestingly, had an overlap between long QT syndrome and CPVT. And this is my uh, last slide. I would like to thank again the organizer, and I would like to thank uh, people in my group uh, in Milan and uh, my group uh, in Munich. Thank you for your attention.